Dr. Will Tallheimer of Work Learning Research. And today I'm going to introduce to you the learning landscape model, something I've been evolving over about 10 years based on research from the world's preeminent referee journals on learning, memory, and instruction. So every year I read over 200, 300, 400 research studies from these journals. And I try to cut through the jargon and the theoretical baggage, try to find out what works, what causes what. And then I test this out with my client, large corporations, consulting firms, e-learning shops, universities. And by doing that, try to draw the practical wisdom from the research and make it workable in the real world. So let me roll out the learning landscape one piece at a time. And it's going to look very straightforward, but the clients and folks in the field who I've shared this with have found that it really resonates with them, and perhaps it will resonate with you too. We've got a training intervention, an on-the-job performance situation, and some learning outcomes. So we create training so that people perform better in their on-the-job performance situations and that we get better outcomes. The learning landscape begins with a causal chain from learning through remembering through performance to results. So we focus in the training interventions on helping our learners build understanding so that later on the job they remember what they've learned and when they remember it, they're able to apply what they've learned. And the learners get a return on their efforts. And the organization gets a return on its investment. So this is the typical pathway that you and I, as learning professionals, focus on the most. From training, through remembering, to on-the-job performance. But if we're honest with ourselves, we know that that's not the only thing, and we have to add to the basic causal flow here. We need to add prompting mechanisms, things like job aids, performance support, intuitive cues that are built into our equipment or tools, signage, management oversight, the things that prompt people to perform, perhaps aligned with the training intervention, perhaps not. You can use them together, but they don't have to be. We also need to add something else, on-the-job learning. Learners can learn through trial and practice, getting help from others. This is where the social media aspect comes in, wikis, blogs, knowledge management systems. People can study on their own, etc. But we've got to realize that learning through a training intervention isn't the only way to learn. Now, there's three pathways from on-the-job learning to on-the-job performance. The first is that the learners can learn something so that they remember it later on the job. The second one is they can learn it just in time. So they learn something to apply it right away. And the third pathway is that the learners create notes and job aids for themselves to use later to prompt their own behavior. So here we have the full learning landscape model. But now what I'm going to do is break it into separate zones to show you how this is informed by the learning research. So the first zone is the learning zone. And the key thing here is to remember that learning happens in training but also on the job. Now in the trigger zone we're really getting into some really important stuff about human cognition. And particularly this zone reminds us that humans are less proactive than they are reactive. In fact, almost all of our functioning is triggered. All of our cognition, all of our thinking is triggered by external cues in our environment. This happens both in remembering and in prompting. Now, I'm going to break this down at a cognitive level to show you what I mean. So here we have remembering. And the external cues in the environment trigger long-term memory, which then trigger working memory. Or in other words, we retrieve information from long-term memory 
after we're triggered by external cues. Now prompting on the other hand, the external cues in our environment trigger working memory directly. Now you can see the key thing here is that we have to realize that it's not just good enough to get information into people's heads. What we want to do is to trigger their cognition at the right time and in the right situation. This is one of the missing links in previous models of workplace learning. Now the next zone is the performance zone and this is where it all happens. This is where people put into action all the things that they've learned, all the things that they've been prompted with, etc. And the final zone is the result zone. And here I have focused on individual results, what the individual learners get out of it, and the organizational results as well. Okay, now that we've laid out the learning landscape, now we're going to talk about how you and I, as learning professionals, can get better results. And the first thing we'll talk about is where we have the most influence. Now, if you look at the learning landscape model, where do you think we have the most influence? Well, I'm going to argue that our area of greatest influence is the old learning through remembering to on-the-job performance, from training to remembering to on-the-job performance. Because that's our traditional role, that's where right now we have the most influence. Our second major influence is in the prompting mechanisms, like job aids that we can create. Our third is structuring on-the-job learning. And our fourth and weakest influence, because we usually don't get to work side by side with our learners, is the on-the-job performance situation. Now you may think, okay, well, this is good, so these are all the things I ought to try to have influence over. But there's one important caveat here, and that is that our greatest impact may depend on many factors, but it may not be where our greatest influence is. So, for example, it may be best to create a really effective job aid more than creating a very effective learning intervention. And one of the reasons is because people forget. They don't always remember. Or if they're under high stress, high anxiety, or they don't use the information for a long time, then a job aid may have more impact. Also, what if we could structure the on-the-job learning environment so that people can learn from each other on an ongoing basis. That could be a lot more powerful than a one-time training program. Or what about structuring on-the-job performance, the incentive system or things like that? That could have more impact than a training program as well. So we can use this notion of influence, but we ought to realize that what's most important is the impact that we have. So another way to use the learning landscape model is to focus on learning evaluation. So what I've got laid out for you here is the Kirkpatrick's four levels. So you can see here level one, these are our smile sheets. Level two, our immediate tests of remembering and decision making. Level three, does job performance improve? Level four, does business performance improve? Just by looking at the learning landscape model here, you can see that a lot of things aren't being measured. But just to frighten you a little bit, what I'm going to do is now add to the four levels a more full source learning evaluation. So here we go. Wow! Look at that. Look at all the things that we could be measuring that we're not measuring. So again, just to scare you a little bit, Here's the four levels, and here's a more, more full-source learning evaluation. Now, I'm not going to go into all these different things at this time, but I really just want to make the point that by using the learning landscape model, we can do a lot better job in evaluating our learning results. Now, another way that the learning landscape model can work for you is to help lay out who has responsibility for what? So for example, these red areas indicate our responsibility as learning professionals. And the green arrows 
represent the responsibility of business and line professionals. This is a very important graphic because it shows what we can do and what the business side can do. In fact, what they must do if we're going to maximize our learning and performance results. Okay, so let me summarize. These are the major benefits of the learning landscape model. First, the model's comprehensive. It's research-based. It's credible. It's straightforward. And it's usable. It's not overly complicated. And because it's all those things, it enables us as learning professionals to remember all aspects of our responsibilities. We're not just the training people. If we're going to be effective or have maximum effectiveness, there's a lot more we should be doing. And this model particularly helps us remember that we should support our learners in remembering, that we should provide them with prompting mechanisms, that we should enlist on-the-job learning as a way to support the learning process as well. The learning landscape model gives us a framework for evaluation so that we can create a more full-source learning evaluation approach. It helps us communicate with our stakeholders. Because it's comprehensive and research-based and because it's relatively straightforward and simplified, it's a great way to get conversations going with those who we work with. It particularly helps us enlist our business partners in a true partnership, getting their input, getting their ideas, and getting their energy so that we can work together to create maximum learning benefits. Hey, this is Will Tallheimer saying thank you. And I want you to know to feel free to share this video within your company, outside your company, wherever you want. When the book comes out, and you can find out more about the book and uh, what I'll be going to be doing is releasing information from the book uh, before it's published. When the book comes out, there's going to be templates. The PowerPoint slides will be made available. Uh, please stay in touch. It's going to be, we're going to do something really unusual and unique, um, not only in the training and development field, but worldwide. I can't tell you about it yet. Um, but in the meantime, if you need consulting, if you want to benchmark your e-learning or your training against the research, if you need learning design help, you want a keynote speaker, you want somebody to lead a workshop on instructional design or learning measurement, let me know. I'm available. You can reach me at my phone number here or at uh, my email. Uh, it's been a pleasure doing this work, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Take care now.